pain is just a, it's a warning signal from the body. Just like the check engine light when you're in your car, when, when you're driving and that light pops on, it's a sign that something's wrong. And so neurologically speaking, for that signal to pop up and, and enter your conscious mind, it means that signaling of something called nociception, which is noxious stimuli, and it can come from any number of different things, has reached a threshold level where the body can no longer deal with it uh, on a subconscious level, and it needs to recruit your conscious mind to, uh, to deal with the problem and figure out what it is and then, and then resolve it. So most issues are resolved on the subconscious level without us ever being aware of them. So once it becomes pain, it's the conscious awareness of those signals. So we can all have, you know, certain stimuli or, you know, something rubbing against us or whatever it is, uh, even, you know, bacteria that are breaking down part of our, you know, our skin or part of our tissue and sure. not feel it because it hasn't hit that threshold. Right. Sure. And meanwhile, our body kind of mitigates it, takes care of it. Our natural immune defenses, uh, start to take care of those things and keep them at bay. And we don't feel them. Mm -hmm. but when it hits that threshold, that's when we feel it. And for a lot of people, they have like a, a lowered threshold for pain, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to somebody else, right? Because pain can be, again, it's, it can be more of a perception or an alteration in the nervous system as well. Can it? Yeah. So, so I, you, you touched on a few things there and, and, and I'll just unpack that a little bit. So it's important to understand that pain is an intelligent signal. It's put there for a reason. It's not yeah. random. Um, and, and like you said, most of it is handled subconsciously so that we can deal with, you know, feeding ourselves and interpersonal relationships and, and higher, higher order stuff. So the classic example here would be, uh, touching a hot stove. So that reflex arc happens way before the sensation of pain even hits the brain. And you know this, you're shaking your head because it's a loop that hits the spinal cord and comes back and triggers the reaction. Your, your body's like, oh, I got this. Don't worry. I'm going to save you from doing the stupid thing that you're about to do, whether you're yeah. knowingly or unknowingly. The issue with what you said there, when it, when it, when it starts to become that awareness level is a lot of times nowadays we're, we're not recognizing what's causing the noxious input because it can be actual noxious input, or it can be, Hey, maybe this is going to hurt your, your brain can be interpreting like an anticipation of a problem. So it can even be visual. Like if you see something scary coming at you, that's your body's going to have an, an alarm type reaction to that. It can be a food sensitivity. It can be the exposure to the tons of chemicals that are in our environment that our body has no natural defenses against. Um, I saw an interesting study on, um, uh, morning sickness in pregnant women mm. that said that it was all exposure to noxious chemicals. Really? So that morning sickness was, uh, in an evolutionary, from an evolutionary standpoint is completely unnatural. And, and women mm. didn't used to have to deal with it when we didn't have those types of toxins in our environment, which makes sense, you know, because you have, uh, I know you have children and, and, yeah. and I have, I've got my second on the way right now. And, and my wife, you know, any pregnant woman will tell you like certain food flavors or certain smells of like products, it can drive them absolutely mad when they're pregnant. And I think it's, mm. it's that heightened sensitivity when they're more vulnerable during the pregnancy and, and essentially there to protect us and ensure our survival, which is exactly what pain is there for. It's, it's a survival mechanism. It's, yeah. it's to keep us alive and, and make sure we survive long enough to reproduce and raise children. Yeah. So that's a great message to summarize that chronic pain is really a, a life-saving signal in our body. And it's actually, like you said, a form of intelligence. I really like that terminology. Yeah, well, I would, I would push pain back. should be. Pain. Yeah. 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 Not, yeah chronic pain. Pain. <laughs> Not chronic pain. Yeah. Not chronic pain, but pain itself is actually an intelligence. Now, how about when pain gets chronic and why is chronic pain such a big issue in our society? Yeah. So I'm glad we went back and we made that differentiation between yeah. pain being that essential survival mechanism and chronic pain is still intelligent. And this is important to note. It's basically, so you're familiar with the said principle. I'm sure it's specific adaptation to impose mm -hmm. demand. 
Yeah. We usually talk about it in terms of athletic performance. So weightlifting is the classic example. You start out lifting five pounds and it's very difficult to get five or 10 repetitions. And then eventually you work your way up to 10 or 12 pounds. The muscles grow larger, the neural muscle, uh, the neural system becomes more efficient at firing those muscles. So you become more adapted to performing that activity. That's essentially what's happening with chronic pain. And it's really interesting. So the body's applying this training effect where you're having this repeated input of noxious stimuli. Your brain is understanding that the stimuli keeps coming in. So your, your conscious brain is not getting the message that it needs to, that it needs to be getting. So what your brain does is it changes the architecture of your neurological system. So it'll actually lay down thicker fibers to transmit more signals to the conscious centers of your brain. It'll increase what's called synaptogenesis. So connectivity of the fibers. It's like um, if you had a lot of traffic in a, in a, in a city and you were trying to get people from A to B and have less congestion and more efficiency with those, with the passing through of that traffic, you would make more connections of different roads so that people had more options to get from point A to point B. And then it'll actually reduce, which is what you mentioned earlier on, reduce the threshold so that the signals don't have to go as far in order to get up to that conscious level. So all of these adaptations are uh, intelligent if you take the stance that we're trying to get this message up to your conscious brain so that you understand what your body is telling you. Hmm. So I always say to my patients when I'm explaining it, I don't go through all the neurology of it, but I'll say eventually pain starts out as a whisper. Hey, Dr. Jockers, I need you to, I need you to change something that you're doing. And then they'll start speaking at, at regular volume. And then they'll start elevating their volume. Hey, I really need you to change what you're doing here. And then they'll start yelling and then they'll start screaming at the top of their lungs. And that's what chronic pain is.